Hello, everyone. Welcome to Epic Flight Academy. I'm Ray Altman. And welcome to our G1000 course. I'm your host, Mike Thompson, and we are going to be working in Epic's full motion Frasca FTD. Hey, Ray, you know what's really been bugging me lately? What? How in the heck do I enter a flight plan into the G1000? Can you help me with that? Absolutely. Let's go do it. All right. And here we are in Epic's full motion FTD, and we are in the engine run up checklist. Now we are down to the portion that says after engine check flight plan. So please see our video on the complete engine run up checklist. And right now, Ray, can you walk me through flight plan data entry? Absolutely. So once we get to entering a flight plan, on both screens, on the PFD and MFD, we'll see the FPL, which stands for flight plan hard key. I'm gonna focus on the MFD. It's a lot easier to actually load a full flight plan on this screen. Oh, but I can do exactly the same thing yeah. on the PFD side. Yeah, if you push that FPL button, you'll notice you get a smaller version of the flight plan. Okay. Which we'll leave up and you'll see as we enter things here, it'll also show up there. So the first thing we wanna make sure is we push in the FMS cursor and we use the large knob, either left or right, to then navigate the cursor to where we want to edit or add into the flight plan. Uh, so today our origin will be New Smyrna Beach Airport, which is Kilo Echo Victor Bravo, and it's already in. Then we get to our in route portion. So these will be fixes, user waypoints, or some type of landmark that we want to reference um, and fly to or over or near as we do our uh, flight plan. So a common uh, fix that we use when we leave New Smyrna Beach is the Samira fix. So I'm using the smaller FMS knob to then type in Samira, which is Sierra, Mike, Yankee, Romeo, Alpha. Okay, I see that right here. And I also notice it's five letters as opposed to four letters. Yeah, so fixes are gonna be five letters, whereas airports are gonna be four letters. So there is our Samira fix. Oh, well, and if the computer finds it, it'll fill in the rest of it for me. Absolutely. And we can see it is close to the airport. In this case, that's our first fix. We want to make sure it is the proper fix. We would then hit enter, and we've now added it to our flight plan. So we'll see we're going KVB to Samira, and we can then see visually that we are going from the new Smyrna Beach Airport to the Samira fix just outside of the Delta Airport or airspace. So let's say we wanna fly a Victor Airway. Samira happens to be a fix on Victor 3. So if we wanted to load in an Airway, we'll now hit the menu hard key. And the first option that will pop up is load Airway. We'll hit enter. And now it's asking which of the Airways that Samira happens to fall on do we wanna use. We'll use the large FMS knob to go down to the desired airway, in this case, Victor 3. So here I see Smyra could be found on three different airways. Yeah, Tango ah. 208, which is a mm -hmm. GPS uh, airway, Victor 3, which is a VOR airway, and then Victor 533 also happens to be a VOR airway that shares the same fix. Today we're going to use Victor 3. Once we have had that selected, we'll hit enter. And then the next thing it asks is, where do you want to exit this Victor Airway? Using the little FMS knob, we can then scroll down and it's going to show you the fixes as we kind of scroll down and it's adding them or we can go the other way and then remove them. But today we're just going to go one fix south of Samira to the Oki fix. Again, five letters. Yep. And I see what it's doing. It says, if you're going to put the airway on your flight plan, you have an entry point, you also need an exit point. Absolutely. Okay. And that exit point could be a fix, or you might even see we have some three letter identifiers, which those are gonna be VORs. Okay. So we have three letter identifiers, VORs, four letter identifiers are airports, five letter identifiers are fixes. So we'll go Oki, we'll hit enter. And now we've said we wanna enter Victor 3 at Samira and exit at Oki. So we're going to hit enter one more time to load it. Now we wanna make sure that it's showing that we are going to fly New Smyrna to Samira, which is magenta, because that's the first leg. 
And then in the white line, we see from Samira down to Oki on Victor 3. So, so far we got that loaded in. The next thing we're gonna do is we will load a user waypoint. This is more common in VFR flight plans where instead of flying a Victor Airway or a specific fix, often used in instrument flying, we might actually look outside or look on a sectional chart and choose a landmark that's very noticeable that we wanna fly near or over. So what we will do to do that is we will push in this range knob and we're gonna get a little mouse cursor. And then using this range knob, it's kind of a um, four directional knob. You can then push it to whatever direction you need to go. In this case, straight over. And we're gonna go to a well-known landmark near uh, New Smyrna Beach's campus, Lake Ashby. So that range knob actually acts as like a joystick toggle. Yeah, so it's our, That's cool. our joystick to move the cursor around and then choose our desired waypoint. Now, there is no waypoint there yet. Looking on the soft keys across the bottom of the screen, we're gonna see a load waypoint. LD waypoint, yep. load waypoint. LDWPT okay. stands for load waypoint. So if we have the cursor where we want it and we mm -hmm. push in, we've just added a user waypoint and they save it as user, in this case, USR000. If you wanted to change the name of it, you could do so, but for today, we're just gonna keep it simple. So if I put in another user waypoint, it'd be USR001, USR002. Yeah. Yep, we'll add one just north. Okay. There's user 001. And then I could custom name it if I so desire. Absolutely. So now as I zoom out a little bit, we see we have New Smyrna to Samira. We're tracking Victor 3 to Oki. Oki to our first user waypoint over Lake Ashby, then over to our second waypoint just north of Lake Ashby. So let's say that's the flight plan we want to do and we now want to return back to New Smyrna. We'll use the large FMS knob and we'll scroll to the right or clockwise and we'll get down to our destination. So this is where we're gonna put in our airport that is the destination. And in our case, going back to New Smyrna today. So Kilo, Echo, Victor, and then Bravo. We'll hit enter. Now, if we knew the specific runway in use, we could technically load it. Most of the time, we're gonna leave it at none due to the fact that ATC and the weather, of course, changes our runway assignments. So we'll hit enter, and now we've created a full flight plan. I'm gonna push the FPL button to make it go, oops, actually, we'll scroll to the map, and then now we can actually get a good look at the entire flight plan and make sure it is what we desire. So from New Smyrna to Samira, Victor 3 to Oki, Oki to our Lake Ashby waypoint, our second waypoint, and then back into New Smyrna. And we can confirm by looking here, and then also over on the PFD, you can push this FMS cursor knob in and then use the larger knob to confirm that it does show up and read correctly as it does over here. Oh, that's excellent. So a little miniaturized version of my flight plan on the PFD. So Ray, you've just walked us through entering airports, waypoints, um, Victor Airways, and user created where, uh, waypoints. Well, that is a lot easier than I thought. Now, what if I wanted to reverse my flight plan? Do I have to enter all that back in? You don't actually, there is a nice feature so let's say we decided we're gonna switch the order up today and we wanna to fly to that user waypoint first and kind of go reverse. All we need to do is hit the menu button and then you're gonna see an option down here, invert flight plan. So I use the large FMS knob to navigate to that and I'll hit the enter hard key. Do I wanna invert it? Yes, I'll hit enter again. And now we're working in reverse. We're going to user one waypoint first then to the user 000 waypoint. And then if I scroll over, we can see the whole thing. Oki, Samira, back to New Smyrna. And it flipped over here too. Yes. I'm going from KEVB to my user one waypoint. That is a really nice feature. Okay, now one thing I have noticed is 
um, while we were entering this flight plan, we are heads down a lot. Yes. We're not really looking outside. But at this point on our checklist, this is before takeoff, and we're parked with our brakes on or we're holding our brakes. Yes. Yep, we want to do this when we have time where we're in a, a stationary position where we can focus inside instead of taxiing or um, you know, getting ready to take off where we need to focus our time outside. So this is something you want to load and uh, prepare well before the plane is moving. And if we were in flight and I was going to make some changes or add or subtract a waypoint, then I would want to, how would I do that? So we need to then divide our attention. We still want to spend our time 90% outside, but then scan inside. It is a little bit more of a work um, workload uh, heightens there. But what we want to do is practice this in the simulators um, or in the library. So we get more proficient with how to do this instead of trying to learn on the spot while flying. But if we want, I, I got it. if we wanted to remove or move one of our waypoints, so I can quickly show you that too. So we'd push the cursor in or the FMS knob in to get the cursor. Let's say we don't want to go to Lake Ashby anymore and we want to take it out. We would hit this clear hard key. This says, do you want to remove user 000? I would hit the enter hard key. And uh, I've so removed it. Selected first and then verified that's what we wanted to do. And now it's taken Ashby out. I'm going Oki direct to my first user entered waypoint. There you go. Wow. And if I'm in flight, then I'm going to be looking outside, glancing over here to make an entry, looking outside, glancing back and forth and making sure I'm dividing my attention and flying the airplane by looking outside. That's fantastic, Ray. Thanks. Absolutely. So Mike, do you feel comfortable loading a flight plan in the G1000? Wow, that was super helpful. Remember folks, if you have any questions on the use of the G1000, please ask your flight instructor and we'll see you next time.